Now, iGEM have made a few changes to a couple of their documents. The documents are iGEM G11, the unsafe situations procedure, and iGEM 13, which is the domestic supply capacity and operating pressures at the outlet of the meter. First of all, who is iGEM? Well, iGEM was founded in 1863 as the British Association of Gas Managers. And that was founded by the 1100 plus gas companies we had in the UK then, before we went to centralization to British Gas in 1949. Now in 2001, they changed their name to what we call them now, iGEM, which is the Institute of Gas Engineers and Managers. Their purpose is to formulate and standardize the code of practice and those technical standards for the gas industry. So let's have a look at the changes for iGEM 13 first, because it's only a tiny little change, but quite significant in the way we test our working pressures at the meter before we inform Caden that we've got low supply pressure. Now these changes came out in July this year, 2022, and the first little change we had was in section three of the iGEM G13. So what they're going to do is cap the low pressure supply coming into properties to a maximum of 65 kilowatts gross which is basically the capacity now of the new ultrasonic U6 gas meters. So if you are going to put in more than that, now remember gas meters are sized off our correction factors. They're not done off the full load. Uh, I've done videos on that before. I'll leave a link down in the comment section below so you can watch that one after you've watched this. But if you do need to put in a bigger meter, say a G10 or a U16 meter, then you're going to have to pay extra for it and apply to the gas supplier to get that supply put in. Can't automatically assume now that there's going to be enough gas there to feed whatever you're putting into a property. So that's the first little one. Now the next one, section four, which is only a tiny little change, which is our working pressures at the meter. So you go to a job, you turn on your appliance, you check your working pressure at the meter, which you're looking at 21 millibars plus or minus two millibars. So 19 to 23 millibars. And if you didn't get that figure, then you're on the phone to Cadence saying you've got poor supply pressure. But now they've standardized it. So when Cadent rack up, they're going to be doing the same tests as we are, and they have to give us no less than 18.5 millibars. So the working pressure at the meter now is 18.5 millibars to 23 millibars. So that's your minimum and maximum readings, not the 21 plus or minus two, it's changed. So the next thing is, how do we actually test that we've got 18.5 to 23 millibars working pressure at the meter. Well, basically what they're saying we do is, and this is what the Caden engineers are gonna to have to do, is if they go to a combi boiler and there's a, a radiant fire and a hob in the same house, what they will do is they will turn on every tap in the house for the hot water. So they're saying they're getting the boiler on maximum mode because Cadent engineers are not allowed to put it in service mode like we are. So they will turn every tap on, whether the flow rate's enough for them to turn every tap on is another matter. Then they will go to the hob and if it's a four ring hob, they will do 50% of that hob. And if we've got a four burner radium gas fire in the living room, they will put two of those radiant fires on. So one appliance on maximum, the rest of the appliance on 50% load. And if they've got less than 18.5 millibars at the meter or more than 23 millibars at the meter, then the Cadent guys are gonna have to do something about it and they're going to have to investigate it. So no more of this Cadent racking up and going, we only have to give you 14 millibars. No, they have to give us 18.5 millibars now. So if we've standardized it across the board, 
So that means every gas engineer and every cadent engineer will be doing their job correctly and there will be no arguments. We can't ask for any more than that. So they're the two minor little changes that have been made in iGEM G13. iGEM is the Institute of Gas Engineers and Managers. The G stands for gas, by the way, and the 13 is the 13th document. So let's have a look at the unsafe situations procedure iGEM G11. Now let's have a look at these changes to IGM G11. First one we're going to look at is the main document and the at-risk course of action, which is clause 621B. And the definition of an at-risk turn-off situation has been reworded. This defines that the at-risk turn-off criteria has a hierarchy of actions by the engineer. The first option, which is turn off the isolation valve, if this cannot be achieved by the engineer, they should move to option number two which is remove the electrical fuse and so on throughout the hierarchy of responses as necessary to op option three so which is turn the appliance control off and affix a warning label so that's the first changes to the igem g11 which is how we deal with an at-risk situation. Now, there have been several changes of the examples and scenarios in Table 1. The first scenario we're going to look at is 1.4, which highlights reports of fumes or CO alarm activities caused by spillage or leakage or re-entry of products of combustion. A reference has been added to the iGEM G11 Supplement 1 in the notes that gives greater guidance for engineers on how to respond to domestic CO alarm activations and reports of fumes after the emergency service provider has attended. Next is gas pipes in an inappropriate location or situation. And it's scenario 3.10, a reference to buildings over eight meters high IGM G5 gas in multi-occupancy buildings has been added to the notes in this section. Next we have unventilated meter installations which is scenario 410A. This scenario has been added to detail the actions required for unventilated meter rooms or enclosures containing multiple meters. An example of meter banks in flats is given. Here the categorization may be at risk but turning off the ECV or the emergency control valve will not remove the risk and a warning label is not required in this instance. The next one there is additional guidance given in the notes for CO2 readings out of tolerance when using a combustion flue gas analyzer. So in scenario 7.6, when there is no adverse effect on the CO readings, the advice is to contact the manufacturer of the appliance for advice before you go along and start adjusting the governor. And finally, in scenario 713, the text has been simplified and now only refers to a sealed heating system with no effective pressure relief. And this is to be classed as at risk. The old one said no pressure relief or high limit stat. Now that's my quick look at the changes in the iGEM documents, iGEM G11, the unsafe situations, and iGEM 13. Now these two documents are free to download from iGEM's website, but you can also find the information in the registered gas engineers magazine for November. It's, uh, it's in there as well. If you do get this magazine, now I know everybody doesn't get this, not every gas engineer gets it, just every gas business gets it. So you can find it in there. There's also going to be quite a few changes in our industry beginning of next year till January 2023. I'm going to get some videos together for that, so look out for those. Hope you've gained something from this video. Catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.